about both the systems and the interactive computing group. Uh, uh, we're, we're a whole group, but we're also kind of uh, two focused areas, right? So the first area, systems research, um, focuses primarily on real-time systems, databases. Uh, you can think of mobile and cloud computing, network systems, while the interactive uh, computing focus is more so on kind of involving the user with the computer. So we talk about things such as multimedia, virtual reality, uh, computer graphics, uh, visualization, and, and uh, 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 just human computer interaction in general. Um, we have 11 senior track faculty. Uh, so we have Kendra Cooper. Actually, we do not have Kendra Cooper anymore. Um, so scratch that. We have Shabu Guo. Uh, who uh, he primarily focuses on computer graphics, um, in particular mesh deformations. Um, so we're interested in uh, kind of computer graphics and how uh, 3D assets can be manipulated in the vertices. Uh, I definitely recommend working with Shahu. Uh, we have Gopal Gupta, the department head, who uh, in addition to uh, software engineering also does some artificial intelligence work. Um, we also have uh, Latirka Khan, uh, his research primarily focuses on data science, um, such as the semantic web, uh, and he also does uh, data management. Uh, we have Kang Lu. Kang Lu really focuses on real-time systems, in particular embedded systems. So if you're, if you're interested in like networking and how you can get data from one point to the other really fast, uh, I recommend talking to Kang Lu. Uh, myself, I primarily do virtual reality. Um, in addition to virtual reality, I do a little bit of augmented reality and human-computer interaction. Uh, Prabhak Karen, uh, Prabhak primarily works on multimedia. He also does tele-immersion. So uh, very similar to VR, in fact, he also does VR projects. Uh, basically, how do we quickly transmit real-time data that needs to get to another user, right? So if you have two users interacting with each other, you have to be able to transmit that data in real time, and how does the transmission of that data impact the user experience? Uh, we also have Wigley Yu. Uh, she basically focuses on combinatoric optimization, uh, wireless networks, and distributed database systems. Uh, Elaine Yin, uh, she focuses also on distributed and parallel systems. If you're interested in cloud computing, I recommend talking to her. Uh, King Zhang, he's very interested in visual languages and visualization. If you're interested in information visualization or scientific visualization, I recommend talking to him. Uh, he is that's what his main area of focus. So, like, how what's the best way to visualize data so that users can understand the data? Uh, and then uh, Jane, uh, he focuses on uh, computer and network architectures, hardware and software uh, co-design, uh, and distributed real-time systems. So, uh, as I mentioned before, we only have a few minutes to talk, so I can only focus on one of the two areas for the group. So, uh, because I'm interactive computing, we're going to focus on interactive computing. Uh, interactive computing really includes a wide variety of different projects. Uh, basically, anything that has a user involved with it falls under kind of the interactive computing pipeline. Um, we're going to just hit some very high-level projects. As I mentioned, Ken Jin, he works with information visualization. So, uh, obviously, there's an aesthetic appeal to his research, but it's also very important on what's the best way to get information across to the user. Right? If you have a large amount of data, such as if you're working with big data, what's the best way to visualize that data so the user can comprehend the data and process it? Right? Um, here's another example of his uh, information visualizations. Uh, as I mentioned, Shadow Gu, he works in computer graphics, in particular uh, mesh deformations. Um, so uh, what he focuses on is what's the best way, most optimal way of representing high quality models. So keep in mind, while computers are advancing, uh, if you have a point cloud, uh, you could talk about 3 million, 4 million polygons to represent a very simple object. Well, if that's the only object that you're rendering in the scene, sure, that might be okay. But if you have hundreds of other objects, your computer will not support rendering high fidelity objects that way. So we have to figure out how to simplify the meshes and how to get them down to a manageable uh, uh, level that the computer can handle when you have lots of meshes. Um, and he also works with uh, CT scans and how to uh, best uh, uh, work with that CT data, which is basically like point cloud data. Uh, Prada, hopefully Prada's video will play. No. Yeah. Oh, quick time, not at all. <laughs> okay. 
Okay, unfortunately, the video goes not much play. Uh, but Pavel works on immersive rehabilitation. So the idea here, um, how many people have ever seen a haptic force feedback device that looks like a pen and it's got gears on the, the end of it that provides force feedback? So one of his projects works on how to best transmit that data from one point to the other uh, so that you can have a, uh, a trained rehabilitation specialist work with a patient to basically teach them their physical therapy. Uh, let's see if I can do play. Uh, so in my lab, we basically focus on virtual reality research. Um, so with virtual reality research, uh, I'm sure many of you have heard of Oculus Rift and HTC Vive and Samsung Gear VR. Uh, these are all the toys that we play with in my lab. Um, now that makes it sound like uh, more entertainment based, but what we focus on is training transfer. We work with companies like Intuitive Surgical, uh, companies, uh, we're not working with Toyota yet, but we're talking to Toyota. Uh, we're also working with uh, like the National Institute of Occupational Safety and Health. What we're doing is we're using virtual reality to create training applications to better train uh, the workforce of tomorrow. Okay? Uh, traditional training methods don't work as well as VR can. Now, so what we do is we determine how high fidelity does the VR system have to go, and also how can we leverage the virtualness of VR to do things for training that you cannot do with real world exercises. Okay? So for example, if you have a trainee who has um, a problem focusing on what they should be focusing on, we can literally reduce their field of view and change their perspective of the virtual world so that they have to focus on what's the Okay. Um, so uh, this is an example of problems uh, research with the haptic devices. So basically you have one user uh, using one of the devices and the other one gets the feedback. Uh, next video. Just to stay on time. Um, now this is from the Five Lab originally and this is from the Old, um, before the Vive came out with the bilingual interaction, we used the motion capture system over an ATAC to afford the ability to track the user's hand positions and their head positions so that we could uh, uh, have the user walk around and interact with a virtual world just like they would in the real world. So you notice here as the user walks around within the physical space, they're able to walk through the virtual world. And here in a second you'll see that uh, we even created like a little first person shooter demo. Yeah, so here's the first person shooter demo. Basically, using the handheld devices, the user is actually able to point and shoot at targets. Um, so you can imagine uh, this could be used for training, such as military combat. Uh, one of the big things that we're focusing on now in my lab is bimanual interactions. So for example, with the intuitive surgical, one of the tasks that we're training for is how to push the patient side cart up to the patient so that the robot can do the surgery. That requires bimanual interaction in order to push that cart. Here, just an overview of our research grants. Uh, this actually isn't up to date, update, update that. Uh, but we have lots of lots of grants going on in the interactive computing and the, the 